right? Yep. He, he planned that whole thing. Yeah, she said she's glad you're going to work on something. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, my love. Good to meet you, black man. I already got my topic. I remember when I used to, when I was in college, I used to always get into it with the football players because they would always leave their trays on the table. And it's, it's, it's somebody's mama that got to go clean that shit up. And I'd be like, hey, motherfucker, that's somebody's mama. And them big ass motherfuckers, they'd be like, you right, dog. Like, come on, mother. Right, right, like, right. come on, you fucking serious? Right. And then, no different. Puff is the greatest example of that. Yo, and that, and Puff, it. and you know who did that? And Puff did that shit to me. Puff made me feel like I was somebody. Puff Daddy and 50 Cent, at, at a time when Dirty Boys was just, like, we were, like, the hot shit, we were on fire, mm -hmm. made me feel like I was successful in the shit I was doing on the radio. Because Puff was the intern. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, that nigga, Puff, he told you your best dressing advice, right? Yeah, Puff told me my best dressing advice as an intern. Vivica Fox, uh, uh, Vivica Fox did. And fucking, uh, but Puff told me, he said, he said, he said, I don't know what it is about you, man, but something about you, but I'm going to tell you, I'm going to give you some advice. Never leave the house unless you're camera ready. He was like, I don't care if you're going to the store. <laughs> this is when I was an intern, right? He's like, it's something about you. Vivica said something to me. She was just like, she came to Atlanta. She was like, she's like, you cute. Let me tell you something. You, you're your business. Something about the way you look. You're your business. And these are things that I know they will never so remember. This. Let me add, let me add this to that. Vivica, it's funny. We all talking about the same people, so it shows you that these are real people. Vivica Fox was the one because you know I come from Mississippi. I'm guns and Jordans. That's right. what I buy. So she was like. David Banner, you a handsome man. She said, you need to start getting facials. <laughs> she No, no, seriously. She said, you're an actor. That's how you make your, your money. money. You got to invest in what makes you your, your money. Product. So that's when I started going to get my teeth bright. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm seeing all the shit that we thought mm -hmm. was we weak shit. shit. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I told my boy, like, fuck y'all. I'm about to go right. get these motherfucking facials and get my nails yeah. done. Yeah. The way he talked to me as if I was, as if me and him bought the same cars. He walked in, he was the one to come in and set up his Ciroc bottles and shit. And during the interview, he said, he was like, E.T., E.T. this, E.T. that. He's like, what kind of, what kind of Ciroc you want? How you want your drink? And serve me drinks while we're on the air. Not his assistant, not some chick he hired. Even though he had a staff with him, he served the drinks. Puff is the only dude that I know Never that's on his not, level yeah. that still pick up his phone. I can call Puff right now. If he ain't in the if he ain't in the meeting, Puff will pick up the phone. Mm -hmm. Now you got to make sure you that call you, him about the shit. Yeah, <laughs> and you got to make sure that you keep yourself where it's reciprocal for him. Mm -hmm. and, and why not? Right. You know what I'm saying? So you you got to make sure that you can also be of service. Mm -hmm. But a person of that stature, you you owe him that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So so like, cause like to be honest with you, right now to this moment, I'm doing I. Me and him are about to do business together right this moment, man. And the thing was, and I never forget this, he told his staff, and I felt sorry for this girl. Mm. Puff Puff wanted me to do something political for him. And that girl could not sleep. Cause she told he told her, You better go find David Banner. Mm. And that girl looked for me all night. And by the time she got finally got my phone number, I could tell. That she hadn't been to sleep. Yeah. And I was like, baby, it's cool. I'll call him right now. Like, I got his number. He should have just called me. It was good. But he told he told his staff, I don't want nobody else to do this shit but they back. He didn't get him no choice. He didn't. He wasn't like, I want this person, that person. Right, right. He's like, that's the person that I want. Uh -huh. And that's how you really got to be in life. Like, it, it ain't no, if, if you going for something, you got to know exactly what you want and go directly for that. Sure. You know let's, what I'm saying? Let's, let's go knock this shit out, but let's go and get to this shit. Yeah, I'm sleeping cool. this shit, dude. <laughs> I feel like LeBron. I'm ready. <laughs> I'm tired. Virtually ET in the galaxy right now. Let me tell you guys something, bro. When I tell you the person that's about to touch this mic before he even breathes a sentence or a word or inhales or exhales on the damn microphone right now, let me tell you what this man has meant to me in my career. Every time when I was an intern, if he seen me, he spoke. If we if if we was in traffic, he spoke. If we was in the store at Seven Nandas, he spoke. If 
if he had an interview with me when my career started blossoming a lot better, we had good intellectual conversations about the business. Strip this man club. Has, strip club. <laughs> everything. Church. <laughs> Church. David Banner, sir. How are you doing, sir? Hey, man, it's, it's funny. I didn't get to, get to tell you this uh, offline. Guess who called me yesterday? And we talked for about an hour. Who is that? Coco bro. Yo, for real. Yeah, it, it was crazy, man, because um, there's some there's some things that he's going through politically. Yeah. And he called me. You know, he's the one that's advi as the spiritual advisor to everybody. And he called me yesterday, man, and me and him talked like we was, like how we used yeah, to be. Yeah, you're right. <clears throat> and it felt good because, you know, he's a pastor now. Yeah. And that's sort of what happened to me musically. You know, what, 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 what lifted me out of the ghetto what lifted me, what gave me the space to to get on this level mentally turned into poison for me. You guys keep a lock right here, man. David Banner's in the building. Let's go! <coughs> wow. Yeah, I definitely want to know. We went all the way there. Yeah. That Whoa. was shoo! Yeah. But that's awesome, bro. Yeah, man. I had a lot of... I came to the... You yeah, remember when? You remember when I first got in the game, I was like 17. Yeah. And I was jumping up and down in these clubs, and I was making these drops and producing shit, fresh from California, and doing all this shit for Coco Brother and everybody else. And I got to a point in my career where they kept telling us about syndication and everything else. And when you start looking at the numbers, I was raised differently. Where I'm from on the West Coast, you don't play with people's money. And business is personal. I never separated them. If I, if I personally take something out of your pocket, or deny you money, or I steal from you, even if you don't know I'm doing it, or you're not that's aware, right. educated enough to know what's going on, that's still stealing and it's personal, because now I'm personally fucking with your money. I can't hide behind the words, it's just business. You ever notice when somebody fucks somebody over, they say those words to you? Bro. Oh, it's just business. Watch no, no, it's not business, bro. That's y all go, my nigga. When y'all get some time, go to Revolt. I just had an interview on Revolt. I said the same thing. The only thing that I said is even if you don't go to jail for it, don't make that shit right. People think because it's not against the law, Peace King, it's not against the law, you don't get in trouble for it or the police don't come for you, that, oh, you can step back and say, oh, it was just business. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, homeboy. If you fucked over me, I need to see you. Right, exactly. It is personal because it affects your family. Yeah. And my life. It yeah. affect, and for me, yeah. it affects my employees. Mm -hmm. Like, bro, no and lie. your name. He, he, know, he know this. I just hired some people that I really can't afford. Mm -hmm. Like, I went out and I hired some people that used to work for Jay-Z. Right. Right. Like, Rock Nation. Like, KD. yeah, like, I'm talking about big time folks. And, like, bro, like, I know what I'm, I know what I'm doing because we've already done business in Atlanta that people are not going to believe that I'm about to do. We've already got the deal. But the thing is, bro, they have children. So if you fuck over me from a business perspective, I'm thinking about my employees' children that I got to feed. So whether we bring bringing in money or not, I owe these people money, bro. And that means I got to dig off in you for that. Mm -hmm. And that's part of the problem. Our people have now, because believe it or not, you say the West Coast, but that's how it was amongst our people in general, yeah. all over the world. Yeah. Business is personal yeah. because you're engaged in it. Well, this is this is a, a and I this funny. Didn't I just say this before you walked yeah. in here? Before you guys walked in here, I just told him I said, you know, I'm grown now. So like when I first you know, on, in California, I ain't been nothing but a nigga. Mm. It didn't, it didn't, it, when I came to the South, I got hated on my, my own people. Mm. And it was because the education of this country has taught us that black people or people from Africa can only look one way, only have one skin tone, and only have one type of hair. But yet, when I go host East African parties, and I'm with a bunch of Eritreans or Ethiopians, they think I'm fucking Eritrean. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't even know what the fucking Eritrean was. And then I go do my blood test and I'm I'm like, well, it says I'm 89% Sub-Saharan African, but most of it's from the East Coast. Oh, okay, this makes a lot of sense now. But you're not educated in this country to understand what people are and where they come from. And because we're so far set back in our ways of thinking and our knowledge of who we are as a person, we go, oh, shit. Hey, Nipsey, Sorry, Ari Nipsey's a Nipsey's a Yeah, yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. But he don't speak the language. I, I, I said a couple things to him. I, I've been learning a lot recently. <laughs> I said a couple things to him. He didn't know, but he we talked about Dr. Sabi and everything else yeah, and stuff like that. He's working on that. Um, he's working on that right now. So he's, but he's on his path. But it's just it's a good thing because the education here for especially for Black folks here in this country has been 
so wrong and divided and lied to and everything else. If you ask somebody about Egypt, they talk about Middle Eastern people. I'm like, you're talking about Middle Eastern people now that live there. Mm -hmm. But 5,000 years ago, the reason why all those people on the on the walls were painted in different colors that you can see to this day was because they were different colors of black. Mm -hmm. And They were not Middle Eastern. And they're actually going in there with Q-tips and bleach mm -hmm. and lightening the faces mm -hmm. of... Of the, that's the why it's important for us to go do our own excavations. Absolutely. And um, what was funny for me, like, this is the scary thing. The more educated, I just built a library in my house. Like, I want to have a whole library where people can come and study at my house. So, Damn. the thing that I learned, the more that I study, is that we have been lied to. It's about everything that we learned in education was a flat out lie. Flat. I mean, just like Santa Claus. Like, they made that shit up. Like, when I found out Christopher Columbus never stepped foot right. on the land of the Americas, he was lost. That's a, that is a fucking lie. It's a flat out bald faced fucking lie. Any in any, any invention that was made before like the 1950s that's that has to do with work, a black person created it. And then when I started studying it hard, I said it makes sense. They had us working for them. They didn't need to create nothing to make work. Well, the biggest lie yeah. that one of the biggest lies that was ever told is that people were landlocked into their own worlds because they didn't have means of travel. Mm. That's a big lie. So if you go right now to um, the Aborigines in Australia, right, on written, you know, written, in, written in stone, right now, you can go look it up. There is scripture written uh, in uh, in Egyptian script uh, in a um, hieroglyphic, right. And it, the story tells, and it, and it was so crazy, is Aborigines don't have a written language. They don't write nothing down. It's, it's, uh, it's told to them by generation to generation. They don't write anything down. And they kept telling this story to people about the you know, Africans used to come to, uh, come to uh, Australia. And people that are doing you know, research nowadays say, well, there's impossible. No one, they didn't have enough boats capabilities. And sure enough, one old Aborigine motherfucker said, I'll show you. And took their ass up the mountain to the rock and written on stone on a rock the size that you guys are leaning on was written hieroglyphics of a story of how one of the uh, princes, a prince from uh, Egypt, died by a snake bite. And it was written in, in Egyptian hieroglyphics. Well, it, the Moors have been trading with this, the Native Americans thousands, not hundreds, but thousands of years before the white first white person was ever even on this earth. We've always, we've always been traveling this, this, this world, period. But the problem is, is we look to people who have historically always lied to us for our own history. Right, which is a choice. Yeah, which, 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 well, it's not a choice. Well, it, it, it's a choice, it's a choice to believe it when you get older and you realize, but right. it's not a choice because you'd be surprised how many people do not have those choices right. when because they're, they're, they don't have the knowledge of. If I told you right now that two plus two is four, mm -hmm. And and for the rest of your life you believed it, and that's all you've known because you've trusted me. I was about me. to say the same thing. It's not a choice until something else is given to you. Right. Because some people don't have that choice. Right. Some people. That that's one of the greatest things that I ever I, I tell people. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why I rock with Atlanta so hard, mm -hmm. is until I saw black people really running something. Yeah. You could have gave me eighty million dollars, and I would have spent it on rims and cars and <laughs> bullshit, basically. But when I first came to uh, when I first came to Atlanta and saw black folks really running shit, like I, I remember I saw, and it's funny because I end up having a house with two lakes. Mm -hmm. I remember my homeboy from college; his his dad was one of the top um, OBGYNs in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. They had a lake in front of their house. And I wouldn't even go into their house because I had never seen no shit like that. I sat out in front of their house, dude, for an hour. It was like, y'all, you want to come in? Really, I was telling them, I can't take whatever's in that motherfucker right now. I'm from the country. Enough. I can't, yeah. Let me sit here. Yeah, let me sit here. And, and what's funny, now that, I, now that I'm into what I'm into now, and I understand the law of attraction, I was logging that into my brain. Yeah. Like, I was getting that in, into my brain, and it's so crazy. I ended up buying a house in Mississippi with a lake in front of it, and I didn't even know that shit was in... The, the neighborhood I ended up staying in in Mississippi, I didn't know that shit even existed. Mm -hmm. Like, that's one thing that I always tell people. White people will build their heaven on top of your hell. Mm -hmm. I mean... And you know what's so fucked up about that? Mm -hmm. This is how I feel. I, this is a two-part two thing that I hate mm -hmm. that, that white people did it themselves. For real, I mean, this is a true story. I'm gonna tell you, they did shit to themselves. So the the whole point of 
before there was a white, black, or whatever that we had to identify in this country and that we made, there was no such thing. It was just, I'm Irish, you're South African, you're from West Africa. There was no white, black, or nothing like that. It was just who you were, right? What happened was in the establishment of slavery and the establishment of this country, they, the rich white folks, looked at the poor white folks and called them trash. But what they did was they said, hey, you're white like us, you're a white person, so we need you to watch. They made their own people slaves first. That's what people really don't know. And then with them watching over the rich white people, they policed us. You get what I'm saying? And that that's just, so they enslaved themselves first. Before there was ever like a thing of religion. So wasn't it true, hold on, wasn't it true that it, it was the it was the Irish it was, if if I'm correct, right. that don't 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 um don't quote me on this, but if if I'm correct, it was the it was the Africans, the Native Americans, and the Irish. Mm -hmm. Though that was the slave population for America yeah. uh, initially, and then, then there was about to be this big um uh, insurrection, and the white folks heard about it. So that's where, like, the gangs in New York, y'all ever seen that movie? movie? That's my so that, that's movie. when they said, okay, we got to make everybody. That's this color. We gotta make them all oh, white, right? So that, cause if, if if we continue to allow them to feel like they just like everybody else, mm -hmm. then you gotta think about it. You got the Native Americans, mm -hmm. because for a very long time before they opened those doors up to all of those people, white people were a big big minority in this country. Mm -hmm. Then they started realizing, oh shit. These motherfuckers gonna murk all of us. So that's when they did what you were talking about, and they flipped it, and it was like, okay, we all... It's backfired on them, though. Could you imagine the, Imagine this, bro. Imagine you being white and having an answer for what your grandma did. Think about the white folks that you know that grow up in this time and this era, and all they know is whatever they see online, they just want to have fun. Like, if I go to a concert, I'm hosting some shit, and it's a load of white people, and they're just singing songs, because... They didn't grow. They don't give a fuck about that shit. And you got to answer. Every time they do something wrong, they automatically get labeled lace, racist, which is like a backfire on them. You get what I'm saying? And it's fucked up if you think about it. Like, I would not want to answer for what my granddad up. did, dog. You know what I mean? Like, if my granddaddy did some fucked law. up shit. That's law of the land. That's law of the and land. It's and, it's, it's, and, and they been and they benefit off of it. Absolutely. Regardless of whether they're ignorant to it. That's why I, I, I love that they ass get lit into it. Because <laughs> I love it with all my fucking heart. Because yeah. I'll give you an example. This happened recently. These two people, the white boy, it was in Alabama. Um, my, my vice president, or well, my ex-vice president, her son and little young white boy, they grew up together until 6th, 7th grade. Mm -hmm. And 6th, 7th grade is when the bullshit really hit. started hitting. Mm -hmm. So then he called him a nigga. And then they was like, they was like the parents hit her parents act like why did he do that? Well, now socialization starts. Right. So as much as they act, as much as they act ignorant to it, them motherfuckers know when the police come. I just heard you was in the building. Can you? <laughs> <laughs> you good? Oh, it's good to see you. Right after, right after, uh, work it, uh, man. Work it, work it, work it, work it. Work it. Keep it Bro, when I when I walk by, uh, uh, when I drive by a um, a billboard, sometimes. And I see people that I know, it feels awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so, What's up, man? So, how you doing, sir? Good? Yeah. So, you know, Dan, this is our program. Dan, great to meet you. Great to meet you. Yeah, welcome. Good job here, brother. I'm <laughs> hey, listen, good job, I only man. hire smart people to make me look good. good <laughs> That's all I do. Well, I've, been, uh, I've been knowing him since he was he's literally a teenager. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like, literally a teenager. And um, for me, it's awesome because there's not too many people left. You know, you have a lot of people who, because he could have been lost <laughs> and all of that stuff. Because we was, yeah, we was, we were on 113 is what I'm saying. Because that was when the light first really shifted on the south. Yeah. So everybody was here. It was all that. It was you, Tip, BMF, all that. Yeah, Gucci. Jeezy, Brent, 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 Russia. Russia. Yeah. It was it was a lot of dis I'll just say there was a lot of disposable income. At the time. Oh, sure. Right. You know, so for him to 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 be a lot of interns got dissolved at that era time. A lot of Amazed. people, a lot of artists. Mm -hmm. It's not too many of us left, but we want to think it is, but like there ain't too many record executives left. There ain't too many. I'm I'm talking about people who was here. I just you think know. that there was a time, for me, it was, I, I was one of those, being from California, I always learned to shut up and like, if when you walk into something like, where I'm from, you walk into a neighborhood, they don't know you. The term on site is a West Coast term, nigga, homie, that's on site. Who are you? Where you from? 
Why are you here? So when I came to Atlanta, and I didn't know everyone at all, at all or anybody from the South, I always shut up and just was like, it's not my house. <laughs> so I'm just saying, that's how I felt. So I was having fun and throwing parties, but I would only go so far. You got to remember now, Oom Camp stamped me. Yeah. I got stamped by a real ATL motherfuckers. I, I didn't go into the niggas' neighborhood like, I'm the shit. I walked in there like, it's okay if I grab the mic? <laughs> like, it was like that. So that's the only reason I survived. Yeah. I used to watch y'all and but, not but talk. But the thing is, though, even within that, you got to think about the amount of alcohol and drugs <laughs> right. and yeah. violence. Like, all those things that was added on. And then you have to understand, we were new to the lights. That's what I, people don't understand when I say, this is, this is my theory. You get as close as you can to the light, but you never go in it. <laughs> right. That's why you see all these artists around here, like, like you, you, you see them, but their eyes are not really there right, no more. Right. I was walking around for about two years like that. Yeah. Man, when you look directly in the fame, it ain't nothing like that. Bro. I, I've never, I've done a lot of stuff in my life, but there's nothing that's ever been as addicting as fame. Right. You know who said that shit too? Uh, Dave Chappelle said that shit. Hmm? He said Hollywood was seducing me all over it. I just couldn't afford. <laughs> I couldn't afford to go to Africa one day. I had to. I had to save up my money. You know. You know. I heard the back. The behind the scenes stories of that. I don't know how true it was, but the behind the scenes story of that was. And I heard it from another comedian actually. He said the reason why he went. That the reason what, what really happened. Why they called him a crackhead. Sorry, the they way. told him they were going to call him a crackhead. If he didn't take the deal. Now, initially, what I was told, I don't know how true it is, but the back behind story was that was that Dave Chappelle initial contract was for half, 50%, right? What ended up happening was the show became so popular, it amounted to $250 million. They made $500 million off that shit. He was supposed to get a check for that. When they seen how much he was supposed to get, that's when they said, we need to renegotiate this. And he was like, no, I want my fucking $250 million. And so they offered him $50 million. And they told, and supposedly, this is all what I heard now from another comedian, they told him that if they did not take the $50 million check, that they were going to call him a crackhead and, and let everyone know how crazy he was. And that's what they did. I, I told somebody else, I said, if you have enough, if you're, if you're of high society, you know what I mean by that, and you have enough money and power, you can make evidence. But, but that goes back yeah. to exactly what we were saying. <laughs> That's what I was telling you why I don't mind a motherfucker suffering. <laughs> That's exactly what I mean. I don't mind that. Because at the end of the day, if you are black in America, if you are a person of culture, no matter how rich you get, you can always take, you always gonna take the hit. Always. Every time. It's not one, it's not one example. Anybody that's ever a, a, a had that argument with me cannot give me one example of who didn't take the who, who didn't take the sword. Even the people that play along with the game, they take the sword. You know what I'm saying? Right. So I mean, But what's even crazier about Dave Chappelle, bro, dude, he had, I didn't know this. He had the number one selling DVD of all time, bro. Wow. Of all time. Can you imagine? As especially as many DVDs. Uh, sir, yes, sir. we're having a good conversation off the air, man. I wish you guys uh, knew how, how, how long I've known him and, and, and how much family he is to me, man. man. How, we have good conversations. proud though. I am of you, man. Oh, man, like, it's love, dog. Most of the time, we, we don't get an opportunity to tell each other, man, how much we care about each other, how much we love each other and respect each other, bro, because, bro, you came all the way here from Cali by yourself, yeah. bro, and you really went through these streets, man, in a way that a lot of people don't understand. They see you now, bro. You know, the big executive and doing the things. <laughs> man, no, seriously. No, you're making you. the moves that you make, bro. And I'm personally proud of you because we done lost a lot of good ones, man. Like, nah. It's funny, me just as a producer, and I know we're going to talk about the God Box and all that. All that stuff is important, but I think it is more important, man. Like, I think about even the people that I've produced. Exactly. Like, I've, it's about four or five people that I've done beats for, bro. Like, they dead. Yeah. Bro. You know what I'm saying? So for us to be able to. I just had a big event, man, um, in, in Buckhead, bro, where I brought. All the people in my life that meant something, bro. It was funny. I brought Jerry Smoke and B down. Yeah, bro. yeah, yeah. And I yeah. honored him. I honored T.I. I honored David Moody. I honored uh, uh, Rob McDowell, bro, that worked for uh, Lil John. I haven't seen Jerry Smoke and B in a long time. And I, I, and I, I had, because someone asked me, you know, because you go through all this radio movement. Mm. 
in your career. And, and just so y'all know, hold on, because like, a lot of times we talk about stuff and people don't know. Yeah. We got to make it quick. Jerry Smoking B was probably one of the most influential program directors. In, in, in Georgia. In Georgia. Well, yeah, probably in this region because of what Atlanta was at the time. Maybe in if this If it wasn't reason. for him, bro, like, and allowing the Gucci man. I got my Bay deal. I straight up, I got my deal because of Jerry Smoking And the T.I.s, <laughs> that's all because of him. The but, Jeezys. But, but a lot, uh, you know, a lot, I told somebody else, I was like, when I first came out from Cali, it just being a... Uh, rambunctious and run, whatever you want to call it, he allowing me to be a thorn in his side saved my life because I had nothing else. I slept, I slept at that station. I used to sleep over there. So it, it's a big deal. But saying that, man, uh, uh, David Banner, man, how do you really take... Do you think it's promotion or do you just think it's really somebody going crazy with Kanye? Oh man, I and I know, I know, I, I know. You probably get tired of asking this. You know, I actually questions. thought we were gonna get through this interview without that, bro. But, <laughs> I, but I know, to, I know, it's a hot topic. Bro, I have so. to ask it because it's. And, and I would, I would say this: if it wasn't you, I wouldn't answer it. Okay, let me I'll say, say the only reason I'm asking it is because it's from a perspective of a man that I consider to be intelligent enough to be able to answer it. Well, this is what I'll say, bro. I, I, I think that it's, it's, it's more sad to me that we. I mean, I'm speaking about black people now that we spend so much time on that topic and on him exactly. with so many things happening in the world. And this is what I tell people. Attention is one thing. It's no such thing as good attention or bad attention. Once you give something your attention, your attention is gone. Yeah. So it's like whether you think you're giving Kanye your attention because um, it's something bad or you're checking him, you're still giving him your attention. And whether you agree with him or disagree, people come to him for his power to will the emotions of the world's population. Right. So regardless, if he piss you off, if he make you happy, if he make you cry, if he make you want to have sex, he's still affecting you, and that builds the brand. This is what I'll say. Um, bro, for me to tell you um, whether Kanye is crazy or not, that's only perspective, and we're from the outside. Exactly. The only thing that I say is that I really wish that with his free thought, that he would choose to do something better with it. I mean, because, you know, even with him and Donald Trump, well, okay, if you have a relationship with Donald Trump, all right, that's your choice. But why are you not defending us to, to him? Right. Instead of de trying to defend him to us. Right. To me, that's backwards. And I hip hop, hip hop, we give, we give our stars the power to represent the people and all the rappers walk around and talk about they 100 they represent the streets they represent this they represent that but then once they go pop or they are able to transcend the people then they make unilateral decisions by themselves that that's not cohesive and what i'll say you can have free thought because i have free thought mm -hmm. but you still have a certain level of responsibility and i think the free thought needs to be educated free thought uh, and I'll, I'll leave it like that on my part. But, uh, Banner, man, I know you're tired, man, and, and it's always good just to see you, man. We have so many conversations off the air. I'm sorry, ATL. This the homie. This wasn't, this wasn't about... Just tell him, y'all go to davidbanner.com. That's what I need. Yes. New album, The God Box. Go pick that up. Yes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Hey, I, I will say this. I want to say this before I leave, though. Um, it's amazing because... And this is something that... We, we were talking offline and stuff that really hurt us. Yes. As people. Bro, as an MC. I, I finally gotten to the level where I could produce an album that's on the level of an Outkast, or that's on the level of of a Jay Z, uh, uh, Snoop's, you know, Death Row albums. And for you to get to a point to finally, I finally practiced and got good enough to do that kind of album, and it comes out in a period where it's about everything but that. Right. You know, and and that's something that crushed me because I grew up wanting to be the MC that I am now <laughs> and it's like okay y'all I'm here I'm here and ain't nobody there <laughs> I was like yeah well there you know what bro again there's no demographics no more it's just can you sell it we're in the era of can you sell it and we selling it now and, and what's crazy bro uh, we were just talking about this bro I created something that was, was called the God Boxes mm -hmm. and bro I sold 2,000 of them bro at $250 a piece wow and it changed the whole course of my office and my career because originally, you know, I own a multimedia and a marketing company. I'm talking about Mercedes Benz. We did gate, the second biggest Gatorade commercial in history. But bro, when these boxes start selling and I really start being able to do what we preach about. We talk about 
controlling our own economics. We listen to powerful people like Killer Mike. And for the first time, I was really doing the stuff that they wrote about in Power, or that Claude Anderson wrote about in Powernomics. And I used, um, I think it was, it was over 60 to 70 percent all black businesses to produce everything that had to do with my album, bro. And those boxes sold unlike anything. One person said it was the dopest marketing scheme that they had ever seen. <laughs> but I told them it wasn't a scheme. Because I took all the things that helped make me conscious. It's a book in there, two DVDs, clothes. It was everything. It was just like, if I had an opportunity to give somebody consciousness in the box, mm -hmm. it was there. And I'll tell you this in closing. Bro, it was this 50-year-old guy that I think he plays guitar for Earth, Wind, and Fire. One of the really big groups. He said that that box changed his religion. And I'm not saying that that's a good or bad thing, but to be able to have effect on somebody that's older than me, mm -hmm. that's my elder. That's exactly why I say demographics are dead. Yeah, you it's know. Can you sell it and can they get something from it? And sometimes it, they need that energy change. Yeah. You learn when you, you figure it out when you're 19, you might figure it out when you're 50, but you figure it out. All right, last thing in closing. I want y'all to do me a favor, man. Y'all make sure y'all stay on E. <laughs> but making sure, man, that it keeps his energy as positive as, I am as he can. Tired. <laughs> and he, yeah, y'all, y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Just stay on the body. He know what I'm talking about, man. Cause this positive, is, son. This, <laughs> what was the old school joint? <laughs> man, I, I, I'm proud of you, man, and and I appreciate you, bro. And just stay safe out here, bro. That's the that's amazing. Safe, man. I appreciate you, man. You guys keep a lock right here, man. Appreciate you, Mr. Uh, oh, brand man, new. All good, man. Hold on, real quick. Let's, uh, before you leave, man, let's just, I just want to go out there and take a couple of pictures. Two, three. It's good. Yeah, just... Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. How you doing, bro? This, oh, I'm bro. so sorry, man. So this is a... Uh, no, nah, we didn't met we, we, before, Yeah, okay. we, we met a few times. Yeah. I, I, but I've I known him for a long time. Like, yeah, so super, Kodak. Long, like when I was in college. Yeah. I used to listen to him when I was um, playing the GameCube. When yeah. uh, you had the fuck news uh, over at 107.9 mm -hmm. with the uh, still smoking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's like, you know, things, Smoke come, confessions. Still, things come in full circle. But yeah, nah, we go. We, we met a few times, man. Yo, I'm, I'm happy for him because... TMZ like reality TV. I hate reality TV shows. I hate re I think reality TV shows worse for black folk than gangster rap. Yeah, I really, really I do. I really, really do. But, 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 back to TMZ. Um, but who am I to judge? Because I'm, I'm a gangster rapper. So, um, this is what happened between me and TMZ. I don't know if you remember. I went to jail for the first time at 42. 44 now. I have to admit, TMZ, I don't know how the motherfuckers, my little cousins was calling me, man, TMZ called, them motherfuckers, I don't know, man, they got tentacles out this motherfucker. <laughs> I don't know if you know what happened, but I got into it really bad in D.C. Uh, cops, the 8, 9, 10, club. cops, yeah, club, when I threw the money at it, yeah, all that yeah. shit. So I snapped, I hadn't snapped, because I've been meditating, I had snapped like that for like four, five years. Yeah. Anyway. They actually tried to get in contact with me. I said, I don't want to talk to y'all motherfuckers. The story came out, right? Um, what was funny is Ricky Smiley, the head crack. What, this, this actually bro, almost brought tears to my eyes because as much as I fight for my people, black radio attacked me more than white TV and white oh, radio yeah. did. And nobody ever heard my side of the story. Headcrack and and um, Ricky Smiley said, I know David Banner personally. They said, uh, uh, Ricky Smiley said, if a nun came up to me and said David Banner did some shit, I'm going to believe David Banner over the nun until I talk to David Banner, right? right? So shit finally blew over. I ended up talking to one of the top white ladies at TMZ. She told me something so powerful. She said, do you know why? She said, if you notice, we don't call and ask nobody when we about to put them on TV. Mm -hmm. She said, we actually respect what you're doing over here. She was like, white and black folks over here. Like, it ain't too many artists that's taking the stand that you that you took. Mm -hmm. So we tried as hard as we possibly could to make sure we got the proper story. You know what I'm saying? So I'm only telling you that is because you have the opportunity to do that. I'm saying the same exact thing that he said. You now have a power mechanism, and I know... If they did that to me, and I'm from the South, that you definitely could do it. Because the, the truth is, it's no different than rap. 
motherfuckers talk about these record companies and how these record companies force it. Ain't nobody forced you to say shit. Now, they may put pressure on your ass right. that if you do this, it may be a little bit easier for you. But you have an opportunity to define what it is. Even what your boy said. What's, what's the dude's name? Um, the black guy from out there. That Van. Man, what Van said, bro, I, I speak for a living. That's why I make most of my money is mm -hmm. public speaking. Bro, I couldn't have articulated that point better than Van did, bro. I, he took that point right there, bro. It, I even saw Kanye eyes. Right. Kanye was like, what, what the fuck? fuck? <laughs> Yo, bro, I'm sorry, bro. Yeah, yeah. He ran like it because you couldn't say nothing. Right. Bro, it was it was passionate. It was it was articulate. And you could tell he was he was really a fan. Like that's how that, that's how I feel. But when people ask me about Kanye, I'm like, that's how I feel. I'm a this this nigga ushered in the millennial generation, bro. He yeah. ushered in the ego generation. He yeah. ushered in the generation that was like, you know what? <clears throat> Fuck school, bro. I'm gonna make this shit. He ushered in the nigga that walked in and said, Hey, I'm I'm you know what? You know what this era is? This era is Kanye West's brain that look like little Wayne's. Yeah. That's exactly what we're in right now. Niggas with tattoos on their face and their hair, but they they talk like Kanye. Yeah. They talk like that nigga. They be like, yeah, I'm the shit without being before they are the shit. Yeah, I'm the GOAT before I am the GOAT. That's Kanye talk, nigga. He talked like that in the beginning of his career. That's feel, all we yeah, heard. I the same way, just like hearing these things he said over the past few weeks. It's like, damn, bro, like, I literally listen. I graduated, when I graduated high school, the first thing I listened to was the graduation album. But that's why For it's the second hurtful. time, graduation album. When I got my master's, graduation album. So that's like, why it's hurtful because that's why because you 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 know what it is when you hear shit like that you you felt that his education level uh, and I, I don't know what his education level or that his knowledge or whatever the, however he got that knowledge was at a different realm yeah and to hear him say those things it just it felt like it's coming from an un like how could you say that like do you really because people talk about four hundred years slavery right well how how could you do do for four hundred years. You gotta realize people were, were in this country before America was even established. Yeah. It was it was Europeans over here trying to establish a country, then it became America. Yeah. It was different. Like so yeah, four hundred fucking years. And it's not just a whip in a chain, it was a mental thing too. And, yeah. and it was also that we it, one of the things that people don't talk about about slavery. So for him to say Africans a choice like that. Africans didn't know where to run. Do you know a lot of times people escape and end up coming right back? Yeah. Cause like dog, I'm from Mississippi, so a bitch can't tell me shit about this. When it's nighttime, we all y'all, most of y'all used to get in the city. In the country, when it's nighttime, you can't see shit. You can see a little gleam right. when the moon is full, but I, people don't know darkness. I used to scare girls when I, cause my, I live way out in the country. When I built that big ass house, I used to get out and be going like going like six to seventy miles an hour. I cut off the lights. Yeah. Like some Batman shit, motherfuckers a, a flip. But my point is this, let's get back to you and TMZ. Is that you have an opportunity, bro, similar to, we saying the same exact thing, but in a different way, bro, is no one can define the way that you decide to tell news. I'll tell you how the TMZ, and it's, this is only because people didn't know how to talk to people. When I was super popping and I was in LA, I knew all the TMZ cats. So me, I have a bad mother. And I know I didn't listen to Puff. When Puff CJ, said this, when he told E.T., bro, I'm the type of motherfucker, when I come out and my motherfucking dirty ass box, whatever the fuck I got on, bro, and go to the store, yeah. and TMZ would catch me, and I'd be like, yo, yo, Ryan, like, bro, come on, man, like, if you don't do this to me, bro, I got you on the next one. So if some shit come up, I'll call Ryan. I'm like, yo, bro, I'll let you be the first one to know, you know that shit happened in D.C., come holler at me, whatever, whatever. So I ended up getting a relationship with all the TMZ motherfuckers, so that if I go through, if I'm going, if I'm going through LA and I got somebody with me that I ain't supposed to have, yeah. like I tell them, like, 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 bro, hold me down, or, <laughs> or let me step to the side, and, and right. then you start, yeah. and let me get right, yeah. and then you got a relationship with motherfuckers, and that's how I, my relationship grew with TMZ, and that's how it is now. Now I fuck with them because I know that they fuck with me. Right. Yeah. So if you gain a relationship. With the artists in Atlanta and let them know, like that's what I'm saying. You like, can change yeah. the playing field. That, right. That's, that's what we saying the same, same thing. thing. Yeah. Yeah. Hold on, but let, let me tell you yeah. one last thing. One last thing. I went to Ebony, and this is real talk. I went to I hate that word. Um, <laughs> I went to Ebony and Jet in Chicago, and they said that the heads of this motherfucker told me that they had as many um, straight gay folks that had as many motherfuckers beating women and beating men and on drugs, and our parents' generation. They said, but there was an underlying understanding that we protected each other. So 
we were very, we made sure for the motherfuckers that we knew, mm. that motherfuckers, because they, because the, the TMZ motherfuckers told me that. They said these motherfuckers who we know don't give a fuck about nobody, we eat their ass up. Yeah. We don't give a fuck. We ain't calling them. We own their motherfucking ass. But he said, we know the people who need to be protected. We protected them. If you make these, you make the motherfuckers that you know are good folks, you know, if they know that you fuck with them, bro, they'll bring you the shit that you need and will protect you if you protect them. But yeah. if not, it's going to be rough because Southern motherfuckers take that shit a little bit differently. And I, <laughs> if, motherfucker, if, if motherfucker do some shit and I see you out with a camera, I'm going to put my boys on it. Yeah. I, I, I told, this is because people always tell well, me. I, I should have put that on camera. <laughs> <laughs> I'm positive, David Barry. Hey, I promise I'll edit it out. Hold on, wait. I'm positive, David Barry. <laughs> But that's I people, promise I'll let it out. My homeboys home always ask me the difference between like a, like Southern California and here. And I told him, I said, you know, in California, if we don't know, it's, it's a fight on site, nigga. Like that's, that's where the term on site come from, nigga. That's nigga said on site, homie. But in the South, a nigga will always extend the door open. But the moment you disrespect his ass, you will be in the woods, nigga. And this that is, nigga will be eating ribs like nothing happened. This is what I tell people. This is the best <laughs> like, way I explain Southern. Disrespecting the South this is, is no I, this is joke, the way I This is the way I explain Southern. We will kill you but we would never let you starve. I don't know if you get that. We are the, we're, like, a motherfucker starving is the cold, starving and drowning is the coldest shit you could do. Yeah. We'll shoot your ass in the head, but we're not gonna let you, we're not gonna let you starve. If you my worst enemy, I feed your ass, did shoot you. So it's an, it's an emotional thing, bro. It's still, it's still a spiritual thing, bro. It's still like, bro, like me, I get mad. Like if you an asshole and you just an asshole and you an asshole to everybody, I could deal with that because you're just a fucking asshole. asshole. And you, 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 but if I think you being an asshole just for me, I told a motherfucker this. If you take my manhood, I'm going to dig off in your ass until I find it. You make me feel like a bitch, I'm going to dig off into you until I find my manhood. And it's somewhere off in your ass. And I'm going to dig into it. But, like, I don't, it's, it's in a, like, bro, I had road rage for the first time, bro. This, this, this motherfucker road is what, he almost wrecked my car. And rolled his window. He dismissed me. I lost it. <laughs> it wasn't even the fact that he almost killed me. I was cool with that. But I ain't your bitch. You ain't gonna roll you. Oh, bro, it got bad. I threw bottles at this mother. Like they was like, bro, just stand there. Okay, okay, if I gotta stay in the car, roll the window. Down. I took a bottle. I mother, you bitch ass motherfucker. I killed. I lost it. The, uh, the Zen David Banner went out there, and that's what happened in DC. Like it hurt my feelings. And DC. What happened was, this literally, I was talking to the black man, because it was a white woman. The white people owned the club, but it was all black constituents, mm -hmm. or all black people yeah, in there. Yeah, big club patrons. The white woman came yeah, up, she thought I was trying to get in the, the, the club for free. She didn't know who I was. Yeah. She started cussing me, and I was like, bitch, first of all, you don't know who the fuck I am. So I had already cursed her out. Then the, the same dude that I was talk to, talk, talking to turned around like he was... Um, uh, King Kong protecting the little white girl. Yeah. Bro, man, you just had this conversation. And you gonna play me? Oh, I lost it. I don't even remember what... I remember it was, there was, it was 10 cops on me, bro. Couldn't none of them hold me back. I was so fucking angry. You gonna play me? Bro, we just had this conversation? Are you... Oh, yeah. We about to turn up in it. I lost it. It was because my feelings were hurt. Because at the end of the day, I found this out. I actually learned this from Ludacris. You look at people, and you look at your worth, and if you don't gain nothing from their ignorance, why well, get mad? All you have to do is take a deep breath and get two minutes. We'll get you out of that situation. When they wake up in the morning, they still suffer. They still got to go through whatever the fuck they're going through, and you are who you are. So I don't get mad about dumb shit with dumb people no more. All I got to do is get out of the situation. I didn't hug the motherfucker before. You are right. <laughs> Just so I can get the fuck out the situation and go on back and do some million dollar business. Right. But if I knock your ass out, you now control me. Because I got to go to jail. Mm -hmm. You going to press charge. Mm -hmm. All you need is two minutes. This guy's a man. He's work ethic wise. Uh -huh. That's all it ever takes. Really? A lot of the times it'd be about the editing, you know me about the camera. Like, I'd be telling people all the time, like, don't come to me talking about what kind of camera you got, you can't you can't even use it. Exactly. So I'm trying to tell you what kind of Ferrari you have, you don't even know how to drive it. You ain't even putting the right gas in. Right. That's <laughs> why so I had to use my cell phone too, it was overheating. <laughs> it doesn't matter, bro, as long as it works. What's up to you? Yeah, tell me if I'm gonna fall off the edge, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, let me just show you this room too, Banner, just so you know. So like, if you got something else going on, and you want to do like an intimate setting. Wow. So um, I have wife up on the stage. I have uh, Walker's wife on the stage. The first time her uh, ever performing in front of, uh, of an audience was on this stage. Really? The shit went viral. And now she's got like a gold single, two gold singles, her shit going crazy. I have Johnny Blaze up here. Uh, Wyclef was amazing because I got to interview him and he played live and freestyle. But let's say you got, you want to perform like two songs and you got all your parts out there. We can have a hundred people in here, ask a couple of questions, perform, and go out there. And like, hey, if you want to be on the studio live with David Bennett, on a sit-in, I can say that on the air. Get our audience up here and you can have anything you want out there. So You know when we did that, it was, it was a dope, one of the dopest, like Big Vaughn in mm -hmm. the Bay. He does stuff like that. Yeah. Like what he did with me is like when the girls first started liking me after I did play, I wasn't used to that. I was used to <laughs> being all rough and tough. He brought all women and like had an intimate setting where I just talked to the women and they asked questions, bro. It was it was dope, bro, because it was it was it was literally just like this, bro. And he right here. Number women, bro. Yeah, and so, we like we can do that too. I just like yo, David Bang wants to invite all the ladies in right now. Uh, we can have a chef in here. I had a uh, chef, uh, Chef Marlo in here. Yeah, he he's, had, my, he's my personal chef. Chef Marlo, yeah. that's my yes, dog. Yes, yeah. he, he does all my um bro, he for my training. He does all my weekly meals. That's my dog. I've had Marlo food for like five years. Ask, ask, ask him how many times I had him up here. Right. Really cool. Yeah, food. So I'm giving y'all this idea for y'all because we gotta learn how to treat our women better. So this is what I did with Marlo. Um, my ex-girlfriend is probably one of the most successful young women in Atlanta. She owns a construction company. Um, so, you know, it's hard to find stuff for people who have, like, she's a millionaire. She had everything she wanted. So what I did was I got her keys and told her I was going to stay by the crib while she was at work or whatever. So I got Marlo. We turned her apartment into a restaurant and got his <laughs> boys and Marlo, because she had, you know, an extensive kitchen or whatever, the open kitchen. Bro, we turned her uh, apartment into a fucking, uh, a really real live, like, right, motherfuckers out the restaurant, bro. <laughs> and, bro, it was so dope. He cooked a five-course meal. We didn't get to number four. He said, the motherfuckers need to get out. And she did some shit to me. That <laughs> <laughs> bro, listen, that night I felt like a girl, dog. I can't even lie. Marlo did this shit, bro. It was so fucking dope, bro. And the next thing I was going to do it for on top of a building. One of my homeboys owned the building. And I just, like, I like to pass that on to my bros. Like, just so we can Little do shit. special shit. It don't always have to be some Yeah, because we so busy, man. And a lot of times our women don't be feeling like, bro, they, they, worth, it, yeah. they worth it, man. Yeah. So. When you think women really, it ain't even the money shit that you buy. Women want to know that you spent time thinking about them, yeah, bro. Yeah. I promise, bro, I ain't know she got down like that. She made me think she was from Magic City, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you sure you have that? <laughs>